Hey guys, today we're going to talk about lawn equipment and why it might be time to upgrade. Alright everyone, thank you again for checking out Saving Green. My name is Josh. If you want to find out ways to be more sustainable and save money, check out that subscribe button and please explore other content from this channel. So today we're going to talk about lawn care. Now lawn care is a very complicated subject. Not only because lawns in general are not all that sustainable, be it from fertilizer, insecticides, water use, and lawn care maintenance, it just takes a lot to keep our lawns beautiful. If we all had just wild meadows, all that natural flora would allow animals and insects to kind of populate our lawn. And yes, it would be more ecological, but it may not be aesthetically what most people in this country are after. Plus, it could invite some potentially harmful insects and animals into our properties, um, and that's not something we want either. So from a pragmatic standpoint, maintaining your lawn in the greenest way possible is certainly a laudable goal. And today we're going to focus on lawn care equipment specifically. So a few years ago, we upgraded our old Craftsman lawnmower for an Ego 56 volt electric powered lawnmower. And it's been great. And there's been a few things right off the bat that we've really, really appreciated. For one, the ease of use. It is super easy to just charge the battery, pop it in the lawnmower, and just hit the ground running. It has a few kind of nifty features that we've really found quite enjoyable. It's a quick adjust lever for the height of the push. By simply just pressing the button and the crank at the same time, you get the lawnmower to just start right away. You don't have to crank. You don't have to mix any solutions. You're not dealing with stabilizers. You're not dealing with oil changes. And overall, it's just cleaner and really easy, and it's been a delight to use. Um, here you can see it's getting through our Florida lawn with really out any problems at all. I'm able to get through our quarter acre pretty much in one charge, which lasts about 45 minutes, give or take, depending on the height of the grass and the moisture level of the grass. But it's really been just an absolute pleasure to use, and there's no reason I feel like to go back to gas. So it is certainly much quieter. I don't know exactly how much quieter it is, but I can tell you that you can now have a conversation with someone while using the mower. And I put some noise canceling headphones on, and it's almost completely silent. And you can listen to music or podcasts while you're mowing, and it's quite enjoyable. Other things that we really like about the mower is that you can quickly adjust the height with a quick lever right here. It's got a mulching attachment as well as kind of a side dispenser. I do find, however, that the side dispenser does get clogged pretty easily, maybe because it's just not quite as powerful as a gas mower. So I just use the bag typically. And also this particular mower does have kind of a high speed detection. If it's cutting through really thick weeds or grass and it's detecting that increased resistance, it will actually draw a little bit more charge and increase the torque of the mower so it gets through that really easily and you can almost hear the engine crank up in those situations, which is actually kind of helpful and quite intuitive. Now we didn't go with Ego for our other side trimmer, blower, and edgers. We went with Works and I'll talk about that in another video, but it really just comes down to battery size and the weight of the equipment. The Ego batteries are just quite heavy and large. They're very efficient, but we found that for handheld equipment, um, other brands may be a little bit easier to use. Let's get into the nuts and bolts of the pollution or environmental impact of lawn mowers and gas powered lawn equipment in general. Now, a few years ago, the EPA commissioned what I think to be the definitive study on this matter, and I will link to that below, but I do want to spend some time just going over some of the highlights. Just a quick summary, back in 2011, they started collecting this data, and they basically assumed that there were 26.7 million tons of pollutants, and that's over about 121 million individual gasoline-powered units that they evaluated in this study nationwide. And they looked at, again, the difference between four-stroke, like your lawn mowers and your two-stroke engines, and they evaluated specifically volatile organic compounds, fine particulates, and carbon exhausts. The data itself is almost a decade old, but the modeling projections are actually fairly current up through 2018. Now, going through what the goals of this study were, it looked at individual pollutants, namely hydrocarbons, volatile organic compounds, nitrogen oxide compounds, as well as fine particulates and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. And each of these has important implications, both in terms of environmental impact and general health and health of the operator or the user of the equipment. The study design was actually quite sophisticated. They looked at all commercial and residential lawn equipment used nationally and 
They basically created a model that looked at the size of the engine based on horsepower, as well as the workload burden, because not all horsepower is needed to mow a typical lawn. And it also even looked at the hours per use and prorated each of these values to create a general environmental contribution. You can see that they delineated lawn equipment into both GLME, which is commercial gas powered lawn maintenance equipment. Those are your leaf blowers, vacuums, trimmers, and mowers, as well as gas powered lawn garden equipment, which looks at some other things like tractors, shredders, and tillers, and things of that nature. And again, you can see here all analyses except for the 2018 projections represent 2011 estimates. This is data from about 10 or 12 years ago that has been updated and modeled to be a little bit more current. This is where they basically estimate that, for example, for residential lawnmowers, about a third of their horsepower is actually being used at any given time. Um, and they looked at how many hours per year. So they estimate that for the average mower, they may mow every other week about 25 hours per year, whereas commercial and in terms of hours per use is so much higher. This is kind of a general summary here. You can see that lawnmowers overall impact about 40% of emissions. Trimmers and edgers are next at about 18%, followed by tractors, leaf blowers, etc. All non-road sources account for 240 million tons of pollutants each year, about 70% of all the volatile organic compounds, 12% of nitrogen oxides, 29% of carbon monoxide, 4% of CO2, and 2% of particulates. This is, I think, really important to know, which is that your smaller engines, your two-stroke engines, where the oil and gasoline is mixed, tend to be the dirtiest in terms of how those engines function and the exhaust that they produce. So it was important that they separated that out and paid special attention to two-stroke and smaller engine contribution. And they also estimate benzene, butadiene, acetaldehyde, and formaldehyde, all of which have important health implications, and we'll get to that in just a moment. And they look at state contribution. So my home state, Florida, is unsurprisingly the most polluting. You can see here both for every aspect, Florida is orders of magnitude higher than every other large state. California may be a close second. So now let's get into some of the health implications of this. Now, the direct links are not clear. There are a lot of studies mostly cited in this article and elsewhere online that link to certain types of leukemias, lymphomas, as well as neurologic changes like autism that could be related to certain hydrocarbons, benzene exposure, and acetaldehydes. And all of these in certain quantities are being emitted by gasoline-powered lawn equipment. Nitrogen compounds, when they mix with ultraviolet light, can actually impact ozone quality. Also particulates, so respiratory air quality is important. So that is another factor that they address here. And then lastly, the impact on climate change. Internal combustion engines do produce carbon dioxide, and as we all know, carbon dioxide, when released in the atmosphere, does increase the global warming efficiency by maintaining thermal energy in the atmosphere. And that is also something that they discuss. I think this study is incredibly impactful and important to be aware of. It doesn't always give us a real term sense as to you know, how we can relate to a lot of these numbers. So other websites, like for example, this article from the Washington City paper, here they basically normalize the data in kind of bite-sized bits. So they basically say that, well, the amount of hydrocarbons and nitrogen is equivalent to a car going 40 miles an hour, traveling for 160 miles, for example. And here we basically can see that the relationship of one hour of mowing the lawn may be equal to about four hours of driving your vehicle. So. No matter how you package it up, there are certainly real world, both environmental and health implications to operating your gas powered lawn equipment. And it definitely may make environmental sense to switch. But what about financial sense? So in the next video, I created a spreadsheet that will go into the calculations that you can run for yourself to determine whether or not it makes financial sense to switch from a gas powered mower to a battery powered one. If you want to find out that content, just click the next video that will be coming up right here on your feed. And thank you again for your time. I'll see you next time. Bye.